Hi there, I'm Dr. Chris. In previous videos, I primarily talked about explosive seismic sources, which release a large amount of energy over a short period of time. While these types of sources are effective in seismic surveys, they have advantages and disadvantages in their use. The disadvantages can be mitigated by a seismic source that is considerably safer than explosives and barely leaves a mark on the ground. Enter Vibrosize. Here we go. In typical surveys where explosives are used, a source is drilled to depth and triggered imparting a large amount of energy in a short period of time. If we take a closer look at the signal from the explosive source, by zooming into the wavefront and observing the wavelet, we see that the amplitude spectrum contains a wide range of frequencies. However, compared to the frequency spectrum of a high amplitude spike, the explosive source is band limited. This band limitation comes from frequency attenuation through the earth, type of explosive, size of explosive, speed of explosive, and near-surface conditions. Now, the large amount of energy and the broad amplitude spectrum of an explosive source generates a high signal-to-noise ratio in the seismic data. An explosive source is also fairly straightforward to understand. Just check out my previous videos. Essentially, propagating waves, reflections, and received signal. However, there are a few disadvantages which, many times, makes explosives not an optimal choice or a choice at all. Many times, drill holes are expensive to complete. If the holes are deep, they cost more, perhaps prohibitively so. And the harder the rock, once again, the higher the cost to drill. Regulations and landowner concerns keep drill holes and sources away from buildings. Riparian zones, water courses, water bodies, and ecologically sensitive areas are also off limits. Archaeology can also be lumped in there as well. Then there is, of course, pipelines and wells. As you might imagine, they're not exactly good places for explosives. Enter Fibersize, which was developed in the 1950s and requires no drilling, doesn't explode, and doesn't leave much of a mark on the ground. However, the big question that initially comes to mind is, how can a vibrosized source match the signal-to-noise ratio of an explosive source? First, we think about splitting the energy of a single source into multiple smaller sources to release similar amounts of energy into the Earth. If we replace the explosive with a vibrating source, we simply need multiple vibrating sources to release similar amounts of energy into the Earth. Multiple sources and stacking the signal will produce a good signal-to-noise ratio. Next, the high energy of the explosive source released over a short period of time is replaced by the moderate energy of a vibrating source sweeping over a longer period of time. Again, records stacked later to increase signal-to-noise ratio. Finally, this vibrating source, or sweep, is designed such that only useful frequencies are harnessed in the area of interest. This design is completed through many tests to maximize the time and energy for the acquisition process. To recap, an explosive seismic source drilled to depth imparts a huge amount of energy in a short period of time with a wide range of frequencies, generally speaking. While explosives are a proven source, they come with proverbial baggage. Explosives can be expensive, they're well regulated in their handling and deployment, they can be dangerous, and have limited use in many areas. An effective alternative to explosives is a vibrating source. A vibrating source imparts a modest amount of energy for a longer period of time with a wide range of frequencies. More source points are needed to acquire a good signal-to-noise ratio, but vibrators are safer and leave almost no footprint on the environment. More videos to come. 
If you like my video, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, add me to your LinkedIn, or even better, share this video through your networks. Till next time, I'm Dr. Chris. Keep rocking.